Our next speaker is Cynthia Chen, presenting identification of diagram motifs and, mutation by, and mutations by analyzing a deep neural network. Protein degradation is an essential human function. It regulates several cellular processes, including cell cycle transitions, endocyto endocytosis, and signal transduction pathways. In a way, protein degradation can be thought of as a domino chain reaction, where one inciting incident leads to the result of another event which causes another event, ultimately resulting in the destruction of a protein. In this case, the inciting incident is the recognition of a degron. Degrons are short amino acid sequences located on a larger protein that regulate the protein degradation process. And in this way, they are crucial to maintaining homeostasis. However, cancer can mutate degrons, causing a loss of function. A disabled degron is unable to be recognized by the E3 ligase, um, pre preventing, the domino chain of, preventing the domino chain reaction from happening, resulting in a lack of protein degradation. This can cause a variety of problems, most importantly, the uncontrolled growth of cancer cells. And so thus, although degrons play a crucial role in oncogenesis, which is the transformation of normal cells to cancer cells, Currently, the associations between specific degron mutations and the protein sequences that they target are unidentified. And so this was a primary goal of our research, was to identify these associations. To do this, we focused on the deep degron model. In previous research, the deep degron model was trained on 16,000 protein sequences. And after model training, it achieved a 93% accuracy in predicting degron regulatory potential, abbreviated DRP. DRP basically represents how likely an input protein sequence is to contain a degron. And although deep degron achieved a really high accuracy of 93% in predicting DRP, currently deep neural networks are black boxes and they are very difficult to interpret. So we are unable to extract the protein sequence patterns learned by deep degron. Although deep learning models have been successfully employed in various prediction tasks, including early diagnosis of diseases, biomarker identification, as well as um, Early, um, as well as, um, as well as, um, uh, has, as well as uh, identification of key, critical genes. Um, currently, there are no established methods to extract the information and features learned by deep learning models. And so, in our research, we wanted to establish a computational framework for extracting the protein sequence patterns, termed motifs, learned by the deep degron model. And so this brings me to my project objectives. In our research, we, we established two primary objectives. First, we wanted to characterize the, 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 the degron motifs learned by the deep degron model. And in order to do this, we employed a variety of computational and statistical techniques as listed here. Once we identified these degron motifs, we wanted to mutate them in silico to see which sorts of mutations would cause the greatest impact on these identified potential degron motifs. And so in order to do this, we employed mutation ranking and heat map visualization. And so our first objective was to characterize the Degron motifs learned by the deep Degron model. In order to do this, we implemented a five-step computational pipeline as shown here. In the first step of our computational pipeline, we ranked 16,000 protein sequences based on the DRP scores given by deep Degron model. And once we ranked the sequences, we wanted to see which of the top sequences had the potential to contain a Degron. And in order to do this, we employed AUC analyses. And from these AUC analyses, we determined that the top 1,860 sequences had the potential to contain a degron. Next, as shown here in step three, from these top 1,860 sequences, we then generated all possible KMERs, which are basically subset sequences of length K. And then for each KMER, we were able to use the binomial survival function to determine an enrichment p-value. And basically what the p-value tells us is how enriched the KMER is among the top sequences in comparison to the background distribution. Once we identified these p-values, we were then able to use the, um, the standard cutoff of 0.05 in order to determine the significant KMERs. And we identified these significant KMERs as Degron motifs. And in our last step of our computational pipeline, we visualized each Degron motif using a sequence logo visualization. Using this pipeline, we were able to discover significant Degron motifs of length two, three, and four. In total, we were able to identify 101 significant Degron motifs. And for each of the, these motifs, we were able to visualize them using sequence logos as shown here. And basically what sequence logos tell you is how enriched a protein, uh, an amino acid is at a certain motif position. And one advantage of using sequence logos is that we can see whether there's any extended motif pattern beyond the range that we're looking at. 
So for example, looking at the CR negative two motif as shown here, we can see that not only is there this CR pattern at the very end, but there's actually an enriched C amino acid at the third position. And so future research could look into the existence of a potential C gap CR motif. Once we identified these motifs, we were then interested in seeing which sorts of mutations would cause the greatest impact on these potential Degron motifs. And so in order to do this, we performed in silico mutagenesis. And basically what in silico mutage mutagenesis is, is taking all possible mutated sequences, running them through the deep Degron model, obtaining DRP scores for each of them, and then calculating mutation impact scores for each of the mutated sequences. And the way in which we calculated these mutation impact scores is by taking the mutated DRP and subtracting the original DRP. And so once we had determined the mutation impact scores for all possible mutated sequences, we then identified the top 10 single position Degron loss mutations. And Degron loss mutations are basically mutations that cause a negative impact on the DRP. And so we observe an interesting pattern among these top 10 mutations. Four out of the top 10 belong to the EE negative two motif. And in our, in our objective one, the E negative two motif was actually the second most significant motif as identified by our computational pipeline. And in previous wet lab analyses, the E negative two motif was also identified as a potential Degron motif. And so the prevalence of the E negative two motif among multiple analyses, both computational and experimental, suggests that E can be not only a significant um, Degron motif, but it, it is also a target sequence that is particularly susceptible to cancer mutations. In order to visualize the mutation impact, we employed color heat maps. And so in this slide, we're particularly analyzing the CGC negative four motif, which is one of the top five length three motifs as identified by our, object our objective one. And so as you can see in this color heat map over here, there are significant high impact mutations shown in this third column, which correspond to the dark colored cells. And so in order to further elucidate these differences, we generated a box plot as shown here. And so as you can see, the box corresponding to the C3 position is much more shifted to the left than the C1 and the G2 positions, signifying that mutations in the C3 position cause a much greater Degron regulatory impact decrease than mutations in the first two positions. In addition to single position mutations, we also mutated multiple, to, multiple positions to see whether there would be any compounded effect. And so shown here are the plots that we generated for mutations at two positions and three positions. Shown here on the left are the mutation impact scores for pairwise mutations. And shown here on the right is a scatter plot of the top 1% of triple mutations at three different positions. And so there's a clear pattern that arises from both of these figures. Um, on here on the left, we can see that the high impact mutations, which are the dark colored cells, are located in specific positions. And shown here on the right, we can see that these high impact mutations are clustered towards the bottom right corner. And so future research could look into this, investigate this more by seeing if we could generalize the locations of these high impact mutations by clustering. And so before I end, I'd like to provide a brief summary of what we did in our research, um, go over some practical applications and some future directions. So in our research, we aim to analyze the deep Degron model in two different ways. First of all, we aim to characterize the significant Degron motif patterns learned by the deep Degron model. And we were able to identify 101 significant Degron motifs. Using these motifs as targets for in silico mutations, we were then able to identify top Degron loss mutations. And so why is this important? Well, the motif mutation pairs that we discovered can not only inform the synthesis of targeted small molecule drugs, but they can actually serve as mutational biomarkers for the early detection of cancer. And so in the future, we definitely want to continue expanding and improving on, upon this project. And so some future avenues that we can take are implementing a motif weighting algorithm and running similar analyses on N-terminal protein sequences. Ultimately, we hope to validate the motif mutation pairs that we discovered through wet lab analyses in order to improve our understanding of the driving forces behind cancer growth and improve targeted cancer therapeutics. This research would not be possible without the guidance and help of several people, including my mentors, Professor Shirley Liu and Dr. Colin Tokheim, as well as my tutor, Dr. John Rickert. In addition, I'd like to thank several people for their help in reviewing my presentation and papers. And last of all, I'd like to thank my sponsors, RSI, CEE, and MIT for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. We will now take questions from the judges. So, um so you, you identified mutations that would have high impact on particular degrons, but I would imagine that not all degrons would be equally likely 
if, when mutated to, to lead to a cancerous condition. Is that correct? And how, how would you then go the next step to say which mutations are actually likely to be cancer causing? Yeah, so the question is asking about how we could determine whether certain Degron mutations could actually be implicated with cancer. And so in our analyses, as shown in this table over here, we were actually able to calculate a mutation impact score. And so although each motif was scored um, at, by significance, not all significant motifs had significant mutations associated with them. And so for example, the E motif was the second most significant mutation. But as shown in this table, it had four significant mutations that were highly implicated with cancer, as shown by the um, very big Degron regulatory impact decrease. And so by looking at this Degron regulatory impact decrease, we can see how likely they are to cause um, loss of function Degrons. But I, again, I'm still a little confused because of my understanding of the DRP impact was how much it impacted the ability of the Degron to signal degradation. Yeah. But how, is it, how does that get tied to carcinogenesis? Oh, OK. So the question is asking about how whether certain Degrons are related to carcinogenesis and how some Degrons may have more significant um, impact on cancer itself. And so um, that is something that we were able to do with our motif scoring. So for example, when we were able to score motifs by, through their enrichment scores, we gave each motif a p-value score. And so for example, this motif had a very low p-value score, meaning it was significantly enriched among the top sequences. And so this means that this um, motif was highly enriched within top sequences that are associated with cancer. And so we were able to score both the motifs and the mutations in order to provide a more comprehensive understanding of which motifs had a higher impact on cancer. So a question about the training data for uh, deep degrom. Yeah. Is that is it all healthy cells, or all help sequences from healthy cells that are known to contain Degrons, or is it also um, mutated cancerous ones? Yeah, so the question is asking about the training data set for the deep Degron model. And so the training data set is consisting of 16,023 amino acid sequences. And so these were synthesized artificially, so they don't actually have patient data associated with them. And so basically, they were marked using GPS um, systems and fluorescent staining in order to see which, how stable the proteins were. And based on these protein stability scores, we were able to assign um, this Degron regulatory potential score. So it seems like your technique is, uh, uh, it's, it's better at finding more frequent motifs. Uh, yes. And you, so you hint, maybe hinted a little bit uh, as a next step for doing weighting. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, one of the, yeah, so one of the, so the question is asking about future directions and how we could possibly implement a motif weighting algorithm. And so, for example, um, in this case, when we're calculating this p-value, um, every single time this LR motif, for example, occurs within the top sequences, we're counting it as a count of one. But Actually, this LR motif actually has a protein stability score attached to it. And so instead of just counting it as a single count, we could actually um, weight motifs that have a higher protein stability score as more enriched. And so in this way, we're able to account for protein sequences. Um, we're able to weight protein sequences that have a higher prote protein stability score um, in comparison to just e weighting everything equally. We will now also take questions from the audience. Yeah, the deep Degron model is 93% accurate. So I wonder, have you looked into the 7% that's inaccurate mm -hmm. and see if there's any interesting motif that's enriched? Maybe you can improve the model. Yeah, that's a, so the question is asking about um, whether we could look into the 7% that were classified incorrectly by the deep Degron model. And so that's a great question. We actually have not looked into that, but that's something that we could definitely do in the future in order to improve our motif discovery analyses. The sequence of the visualization itself. Yes. So, say you have like the CGC and then the CGCR. Uh, yes. So, if you have like the CGCR and that's like a motif, then isn't like the CGC incomplete? Or on like the flip side, if the CGC is like sufficient, then isn't like the CGC like isn't that R just unnecessary? Yeah, so the question is asking about, for example, the CGC motif and the CGCR motif, and whether we can incorporate analysis of subset motifs, um, where like one motif is included within like a longer motif. And so that's definitely also a direction for future research. We were unable to account for that in these analyses. Um, but for example, we can also look at 
like the LRR motif over here and the all LRRK. So we definitely see that some highly enriched motifs are also highly enriched motifs for longer sequences. And so um, future research would aim to, for example, combine these motifs into one so that we don't have these sort of redundant motifs. All right, thank you, Cynthia.